first, though, also part of our Space Week programming, we follow the American Space Shuttle at work. Australia. Landing expected at Kennedy Space Center at about 7.10 a.m. Central Time this morning. Weather in the area reported to be good. Approaches flown in the shuttle training aircraft by astronaut Hoot Gibson. Uh, reports uh, recently that the skies are clear. Seven miles plus visibility, light winds. No concern for crosswinds on this uh, first landing. If it's soft, you don't have to pick it up. If hard rocks looking for uh, spots on the runway or anything that uh, you need to uh, look at. Well, there's a bunch of us in here that like to be there with you watching. Okay, this. stay out of the 60-degree uh, radius zone off of the nose, after the uh, nose and main landing gear for 45 minutes after a wheel stop. Also, not essential personnel stay up from under the orbiter. Well, we're looking over the runway for anything uh, we can find that would uh, be a problem for the orbiter. Uh, lots of times we find twigs, rocks, whatever might be out here. Some of it's brought across by birds. We're in the middle of a game preserve. Columbia, Houston, check auto damp and item 27, please. Expected time is 0809. The shuttle is a difficult aircraft to fly. It doesn't have engines when it comes back to Earth. It has a uh, very, what we call, high wing loading. Um, it has the short, stubby wings, and uh, I guess you could say it is a, a low lift-to-drag ratio. Um, it sinks like a brick. And it was watched with considerable amusement by uh, members of the aeronautical fraternity who called it the flying brickyard because it had the aerodynamic characteristics of a pair of pliers. Uh, and in fact, many people expected that if the shuttle were going to have an accident, it would be on landing because its flying characteristics were practically nil. It sort of lands in a controlled crash. The big surprise is the sonic booms. The thing announces its arrival with this boom, boom sound of, of, of the leading edge of the wing and the tail uh, breaking the sound barrier. People are self-motivated. They came here to be in this business, to do this job, to feel like they're an important part of it. And that alone motivates them to the point where the, 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 the thing you're more likely to do is get trampled in the rush to get things done. You don't have to lure people out to do work, not in our business.
The thing is full of all kinds of toxic stuff uh, from its on-orbit propellant system. So you see these trucks go out to so-called safe uh, the orbiter, and that's making sure that none of these fumes are loose or can affect the uh, ground crew or the astronauts as they depart. You've rolled to a stop, you've come to the conclusion of a successful mission, and there's a real feeling of euphoria, but at the same time, your big experience has ended, and you're back to the end of the line in terms of getting ready to go for another one, so there's a, it's a bittersweet experience. From this vantage point, we do a detailed look at the main engines to make sure they operated correctly during launch. All those black tiles on the base heat shield have to be checked. We have a little bit of tile damage on the lower surface, which may be the result of either ice or some kind of debris dropping off of the external tank or the solid rocket boosters. Right now, they're, they are removing the PSE experiments, which are the two experiments that house the, uh, the rats. About four hours after landing here, the astronauts are off the ship. The orbiter systems have all been safe. The tugs hooked up to the orbiter, and we're in the process of getting the final go to tow. Invented after the Apollo program, and NASA proposed going to Mars, and of course the price tag was phenomenal. So NASA invented at that time what it came to call the next logical step, which was to go to Mars, but do it by incremental steps. To get to Mars, you really had to launch the mission from a space station. To get to the space station, you had to have a vehicle that could fly routinely into low Earth orbit and back again. So how about building a shuttle, and you weren't throwing away your launch vehicle every time you used it. It is the most marvelous machine ever built, but there's no destination for the shuttle. The shuttle was designed to go to a space station, so it goes up and down to space without doing the primary mission that it was intended for. And if we don't have a space station as the destination for a shuttle, one can't justify the enormous shuttle costs that we have. The Kennedy Space Center uh, is an incredible place where the real hardware comes together, and it, it produces its own set of difficulties. Uh, JSC is more cerebral. I mean, it's, it's a, a paper project and it's a mental project. We think what we're going to do with that vehicle once it's flying. <laughs> 